Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So what's the story here? You, uh, that sounds like I'm interrogating you. Okay, what's the story? What's the story with you? <laughs> you left New York. You needed a change of scenery. I did. Why? I didn't leave New York. Te- technically, I'm still in New York. It's just two hours north of so the you, city. So you moved to where? I moved to the Catskills. Oh, I love the Catskills. You've been there? Yeah, I play this Irish music weekend in oh. August in the Catskills. Yeah. Don't you love it? It is very peaceful. It is. But if I lived in New York City, I don't know if I'd ever want to leave. What made you yeah. want to go? Well, I grew up in the city, so I, I felt like I'd been cityed out. I got my city dose. What do you mean by that? Like I, I just, I, I just know, I know kind of what to expect from the city. You know, I think anybody who's been in a place a long time kind of feels that way. You just like you start thinking the same thoughts along the same routes, and um, so I just needed. I was also living with my mother. Hi, mom. Shout out to mom for letting me live with her. And so I just needed space to create and just like find my, I don't know, not my to, own habits and what I like to do. Not to be indelicate. Yeah. But it's also expensive to live in the city. That's why small... I was, I was squatting with mom yeah. <laughs> for years because I was just like, you know, I I don't want to um, pay more for like less quality of life. Plus, I grew up in a neighborhood that's really fancy now, and so I'm like, this is the best neighborhood. I'm just gonna stay here. But um, yeah, it, it definitely cheaper upstate even still so that was definitely a bonus it's a sin you know because i think that new york this fertile ground for musicians historically i mean going back to the turn of the century yeah that's hard to afford living there is 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 maybe not that great for the city for musicians to afford living there it's it's hard for people a lot of my friends moved to la in the past few years and um, nashville and atlanta so i Luckily, my dad got into, um, he actually squatted in this apartment in the 70s. Literally and squatted. Yeah, and then, then finally the landlord knocked and said, okay, you have to pay $70 a month. And he said, all right, I'm going to pay that now. And so we're rent control. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but um, <laughs> is my landlord watching? I don't think so. <laughs> um, big, so Canadian, big Canadian public radio <laughs> Not fan. anymore, you're not. <laughs> it's because he can't afford electricity. <laughs> To keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we have like a great super and everything, but yeah, good luck trying to get like legit repairs when your rent control or stabilized. But it's I'm if I didn't have that situation, I might not be living in the city at all. You know, now I dip back and forth, but it's very expensive. When I think about musicians leaving the big city and going out to the country, I usually think about you know. When they make their Bon Iver record. Yeah. They put on their plaid shirts. Oh, I love that. They get their auto harps out. Yeah. And they make something sweet and soothing. This is not what you did here. <laughs> you made out, you went out to the record, you went out to the country, you made like a Prince record. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. You should. I'd, I, that's funny. I never thought of it that way, but I, I heard James Taylor being interviewed and the, the person asked him, you must be a really calm person because your music is so soothing. And he's like... Actually, I, I think I write soothing music to calm my tumultuous soul. And I feel like that was kind of my thing in the city was like I was just trying to soothe myself from all of this energy. And so the music was like very calming. And then when I went, got to the, the country, I'm, I'm like, I got to shake things up. This is too quiet. You know, do you do you think that moving to the country impacted your sound? I do. Yeah, for sure. I well, I learned how to drive for the first time. I'm 33 years old. But that's a that's a New York <laughs> thing. You don't learn to drive. I yeah, get that. yeah, that's a New York thing. I but I I just I didn't know that I was able to like physically and mentally able to do it until recently, and I think that was thrilling for me. It's I still love pumping gas and stuff like that. It's so new for me. So hold on, but you said you you said you learned how to drive when I was asking you about your sound. Did, oh did yes, learning to drive so help your sound. I I think it. I, that's why I brought that up because I think it did help my sound. I just uh, I wanted to make records for the car, I guess, and and a lot of it was, you know, recording demos and then driving down these country roads and at night and just feeling like the cool girl from the movies and trying to you know and just I I felt like uh, more cinematic in some ways being able to drive around and just be free and check out the sights and, and you wanted to make music that would accompany those drives yes because there's driving songs right i hope so i i i love driving songs yeah i was um really into tom petty uh just before this record came out i got to see him play at red rocks how good hey oh my god and so that was like you know he's he's got the driving music locked locked down yeah and also tina turner was a big inspiration on this record and like all of those records simply the best and 
um, what's love got to do with it. I feel, I feel like that's driving music too. So, so you, do you set out to you in the studio, you wanted to make something that people could drive to. Yeah, I, I think so. Just to have some kind of grooves that really move along and, and some different types of instrumentation and some, some more like eighties sounding synths and stuff like that. Well, it's, it's a beautiful record. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Emily King. I'm Tom Power and this is Q. Uh, so this is your third album. This is the first time we've talked, but this is your third album and your first, want to talk about that? Um, no. We're going to do it. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're going to do I'm it. I'm kidding. So it came out in 2007, gets nominated for a Grammy for Best Contemporary R&B Album. You're doing shows with people like John Legend, who was just here a couple of months ago. Oh, awesome. Lovely guy. Yeah, super great guy. You're doing shows with Alicia Keys. Uh, but I know that when you, I was reading that when you look back at that period of your life, on tour with these huge stars, putting out these Grammy nominated records, you're feeling uncomfortable looking back on that, or there wasn't a great time in your life. I think it was such an awkward period for me because I just didn't know who I was. I didn't know like what I liked. I was, you know, I I mean, I wasn't that young. I was maybe 21, but some 21 year olds seem to have it all together. I don't know how they do it. Zuckerberg. (laughs) Exactly. I don't know. I I wish I was that person who just had it all figured out before YouTube. Because once YouTube came around, I was like, my life is over. All of this embarrassing stuff is, you know, is now is now here for everyone sure. to see. Sure. All the growing pains. You don't see like Elvis's um, pimple period on YouTube or whatever it was. Did right. he have one? I'm sure he did. He must have. He was beautiful from the beginning. Such a handsome man. He was man. such a handsome man. So hold on, bring me back there though. What you were saying. So you're you're releasing this amazing music. You're getting all this acclaim, but you're not. You just you weren't comfortable with who you were. No, I was. Well, I I was. Um, I got into this big record label situation and uh, I, you know, I went through the whole beginning artist thing where they, they put you with a bunch of different songwriters. And I, I came in onto the scene like, Hey Clive, I'm a singer songwriter. And he's like, cool. Let's get you with the guy who wrote. Yeah. For little John. <laughs> yes. Right. I was like, okay, that sounds like a great you, you idea. You were like, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. Mm-hmm. I want to meet this guy. Mm-hmm. But I just kind of got lost in this, like, wow, everyone, you know, the people at the record company, they're, they're typically chasing whatever the hit was of that moment. And so it was always, th- that was the situation. And I didn't know how to say, no, actually, I want to do this. I was always trying to please everybody. So now, um, 33 years now, I'm just like, I know what it's like to compromise your art. So I'm just like trying to never do that again. Like, what concrete changes do you think you made? Um, well, I met Jeremy Most, my producer, along the way. He subbed for my guitar player on a gig right around the time that the label dropped me. And um, we started making music together. And he's such a hard ass when it comes to, like, don't put anything out at all that you don't like. Like, even if there's, like, a hint of you not liking it. And I'm like, great, I'm never going to have a career. Because well, this is you're hypercritical? impossible. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but we started working together, uh, and like three years later, we put out an EP, and then that started to get some, you know, just putting it out on TuneCore or whatever, and little miracles would start happening, and um, yeah, then we released the Switch, and now this is on a label. This is my other label experience, but it's been total opposite of back in the day you know when i was signed the first time the internet really wasn't even a thing yeah myspace was just invented Mm -hmm. and there was still people blocking you from the fans whereas now like we're just always in each other's faces on on the phone that could be bad too it's yeah i mean i'm a phone addict are you yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to step away from it how so how are you doing it i'll tell you what i'm trying to do so i quit facebook Oh, good. Uh, You're not the only one. A lot of my friends quit Facebook. No, I think think it's kind of happening. Yeah. I quit Facebook. I deleted Twitter off my phone. Whoa. Yeah. What about the news? I, I, I work in this building. Okay. This is like a news <laughs> building. And plus, right. I get it from like sources. I get it from like CBC or like NPR yeah. or New York Times. Like yeah. I, I'm on Reddit. Like I'm, oh, uh, Reddit's good. Yeah, I do mm-hmm. all that kind of thing. But I try to schedule. Someone told me they schedule their phone time now. What? They're like, okay, it's like one time for the phone. One. What about an emergency? Well, you got it there nearby. You're right. Cause Do you sleep with your phone on, on your pillow? As of three days ago, I sleep with it across the room. Nice. Just changed it. That's awesome. Game changer for me. Yeah, big yeah. time. So you, you don't Just not being able to do this, right? Because a lot of artists tell me that 
it's there's a new pressure that comes with the like the ability to connect with your fans all the time yeah gives a new pressure that they're maybe not that used to i i feel bad for the high school kids because i from what i hear like they're just swiping like 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 they're not even looking they just want if their friends don't see they like their photo that's it it's over for them yeah i can that's too much that's that's a new level of high school that i'm not (laughs) i'm glad i avoided (laughs) It's I'm true. glad I just got normal bullied. I think we had just beepers at, in, yeah. in high school. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I got normally pushed into a locker like everybody else. <laughs> right. It must feel good, it, or it must feel like something to be having this moment right now where a lot of people are paying attention to your music, a lot of people are listening to your music, and it's not dissimilar to the attention you got back when you told me that you weren't that fond of what you were doing or you weren't sure of what you were doing or didn't feel like you. It must feel like something to be getting that now, knowing exactly and liking everything you're doing. Thanks. I, be, I hope people are, you know, I, I'm in a, such a little bubble in my own head and I, I just, uh, I guess I've just pushed through. You can't get rid of me is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> I have no plan B. Mm-hmm. I'm not really good at anything else. So I'm just, you know, still doing the music. I'm grateful. And whenever people come to the shows, this tour has been so much fun. Like people are, are showing up and, so it does feel good to be still doing it and like actually enjoying the songs that I'm singing still. So I'm just happy about that. It's a really great record. We're all really kind of in love with it around here. Thank you.